This is the study of geography and these are the branches of geography. Physical geography, human geography and practical geography. These are among the few topics that we we'll look at when we study geography. We look at industrialization, we look at forestry, we look at tea plantations, maize plantations, brick making industry, among many, many others. Welcome to Geography Form 1, Lesson 4. Welcome to our lesson today. My name is Sarah. Our topic today is about the composition of the solar system. Now, the composition, therefore, we are going to talk about the members of the solar system and they include the sun, the eight planets, and the other heavenly bodies as we shall look into them. The sun is the first member of this system that we can look into. And so we say the sun is a unique heavenly body. It is uh, so unique because it is at the center and all the other members of the solar system go around it. They orbit around it. The sun does not revolve. It does not move around any other object. But the other members of the solar system, they move around the sun. And therefore, it is a very unique heavenly body. The sun is also unique in the sense that it possesses its own light and it transmits it to all the other members generously. The light that it gives out is able to reach these other heavenly bodies which they reflect back. The sun is able to transmit the light to its members through radiation. It radiates light to all directions. The sun does not revolve, as we have said, but it rotates on its own axis in an anticlockwise direction once in 25 Earth days. It completes a complete rotation once in 25 Earth days days. So if it started rotating on 1st January, it will complete a rotation, a single rotation on 25th January. It does not have a revolution. It's made up of very hot material, gases, that is hydrogen, which comprises of 70%, and helium, uh, which is also a hot gas. The sun is very large. It's about 300 bigger times than the earth. So it is very big and it is just made up of uh, gases. There's no solid material there. At the surface, it's about 6,000 degrees Celsius. And at its center, it's about 20 million degrees Celsius. So at the center, it's a little cooler of about only 6,000 degrees Celsius. The temperatures are very high like that. And at its center, it's about 20 million degrees Celsius. The sun is responsible for any life that is on the earth. It is able to maintain all the activities that are done here on the earth that take place both physical and human, it is responsible, it is the one that is uh, controlling through the light that it is uh, transmitting to the earth service. The earth also, because of its very strong force of gravity, it is able to maintain all the other members of the solar system, its members, all of them. They are maintained in their responsible positions because of the very strong force of gravity of the sun. So our sun is a very strong and very important heavenly body because it is the one that is uh, uh, 
at the center it is made up of very hot gases it is uh, very large in size extremely large much larger than any other heavenly body it is a uh, also, it does not revolve like these other heavenly bodies. It only rotates, and uh, it's uh, we have said it is also made up of very high, I mean, hot gases, and it uh, uh, keeps all the other heavenly bodies in their positions. Uh, it does not lose any material. There's no material that can be lost to the outer space because of this effect of the force of gravity of the sun. Now, then we look at the eight planets. We don't have uh, uh, Pluto as a planet these days. We have reasons why it was uh, degasated uh, way back in 2006. It was degasated because uh, uh, for an heavenly body to qualify to be referred to as a planet, it must be of a reasonable size. It must be big enough. Uh, Pluto is too small to qualify to be called a planet, so it was given, um, it was regasseted. Number two, Pluto is too round. A planet is not supposed to be round, it is supposed to be oval in shape. It is supposed to be, um, it's, it's supposed to be oval, but uh, Pluto is too round and so because of that effect it was also seen good that it should be uh, degasseted. Number three, uh, all planets uh, revolve around the sun in their own orbits. Pluto had a habit of crossing the orbit of Neptune and because uh, it is crossing the orbit of another planet, so it was given, it was uh, removed from the other planets. So it is just an heavenly body, just like the comets and the meteors as we shall come to see. Otherwise, we have eight planets and the term planet is a Greek word which means a wanderer. Uh, a wanderer is um, something that is constantly in motion in space. You see, so uh, planets are constantly in motion. The Greeks were able to see this very early uh, before any other group of people could uh, be able to see that through their uh, members who were able to study the solar system. I mean, the, the, the stars, heavenly bodies, they, that is astronomy. So they had very intelligent uh, astronauts. I expect that uh, we said geography is a career subject and it's going to build up uh, career people. Some of them, of course, uh, we shall have astronauts coming out into the world and they will help us to discover more things that we are not able to understand now. And so uh, planets are moving objects in space. They are not static. They are constantly in motion and they are moving around the sun. We start with uh, the first one in the list, that is Mercury, uh, it is a planet. It is uh, the one that is nearest to the sun. It is about 59 uh, kilometers, the distance from Mercury to the sun. It's about approximately uh, 59 million, approximately. Uh, kilometers away from the sun, that is the distance. Uh, Mercury is the smallest planet, but it uh, it rotates on its own axis uh, once in 58 Earth days. The rotation of Mercury is about 58 Earth days. What am I saying about? I'm saying that uh, if it started rotating in 1st January, by 30, 31st January, it has not completed one rotation on its own axis. Mm? It is uh, making a complete rotation in 58 Earth days. So it will finish one rotation at the end of February. 
if it started the rotation in 1st January. So that is the rotation that we are talking about. It, um, and it has a revolution. It revolves around the sun. It revolves around the sun once in 88 eight days. So if it started uh, revolving in 1st January, it could finish its revolution in 1st uh, April. You can imagine. And our Earth takes a long time, much longer. So the rotation is 58 Earth days. The revolution is 88 Earth days. Mercury is, uh, has got no satellite. It doesn't have a moon. So it is just on its own. And it is uh, rotating and it is revolving. It rotates very slowly. 58 Earth days and it revolves in 88 days. It could have completed one revolution. That is beautiful. Now, let us talk about Venus. Venus is the second planet in the solar system. It is second nearest to the sun. The distance from Venus to the sun is about 108 108 million kilometers. Uh, Venus does not have uh, a satellite, just like Mercury it doesn't have a satellite. Venus does both rotation and revolution. It uh, rotates on its own axis and it revolves around the sun. It rotates on its own axis in a very slow way, in about 243 at this and it, in, it revolves in 224.7 at this that is the forward movement around the sun it takes the venus 200 and 24.7 Earth days to complete a revolution, an orbit. Then we talk about the Earth. The Earth is the, Earth is the third planet from the Sun. The Earth is so unique among all the other heavenly bodies that it is the only heavenly body that is able to support life for organisms whether it is human life, whether it is animal life or plant life, it's only the earth that is able to support that life. All the other heavenly bodies are barren. They are not able to support life. So uh, the earth has got one satellite called the moon. It carries out both rotation and revolution. And it completes its rotation on its own axis movement of the earth on its own axis once in 24 hours very fast remember the earth the the sun takes 25 days to complete a rotation 25 earth days but the earth takes only 24 hours to complete a rotation it takes the earth 365 and a quarter days to complete a revolution, an orbit around the sun. The Earth is about 150 million kilometers away from the sun. Let us talk about Mars, the fourth planet. Mars is very similar to the Earth. It is also called the red planet because when viewed from a telescope from the Earth, it appears reddish in color. Mars has got two satellites, that is two moons, because we, we call a satellite the moon here on Earth. So it has got two moons that revolve around, around it. Now, uh, uh, Mars rotates uh, on its own axis once in 34.6 hours, at hours. 34.6 Earth hours. The Earth took 
hours, mass takes 34.6. So the earth could have finished one rotation when it is doing its second rotation, about 12 hours into the, the movement, that is when mass is completing its one rotation. Then it revolves around the sun once in 686 earth days, approximately 686 earth days, 686.988 earth days to complete a, a revolution around the sun. That is mass. Mass is about 227 million kilometers away from the sun. The earth is about 150 million kilometers. Then mass is about 227 million kilometers away from the sun. So you see as you move to the next planet, the distance is also expanding. The distance is expanding. And that one explains to us the reason why these other heavenly bodies are taking too long to complete a revolution. I mean a revolution, yes. Mercury, which is only 58 million kilometers away from the sun, it takes it only 88 eight other days to complete a revolution. So you can see the nearer the distance, the shorter, the circumference that it is making beautiful. The fifth uh, planet, the fifth planet from the sun. Uh, Jupiter is about 778 kilometers away from the sun. Mars is 227. Jupiter is 778 million kilometers away from the sun very far it is in the outer planets in the it is in the group of the outer planets jupiter is the largest heavenly body i mean among the other heavenly bodies that go around the sun jupiter is the largest in size it is very big it has got a red spot on it jupiter rotates and it revolves around the sun. Jupiter uh, has got 13 moons. It has got 13 satellites. When the others got only one, Mars has got two. Jupiter has got 13, the largest number of satellites. Would you imagine that life? Hmm? Here on Earth, we only have one moon. Eh? We only see one moon. If we were in Jupiter, we could be seeing how many in one night. Eh? One in the west, one in the east, you know, everywhere. It is so interesting. Another one in, up here on our head, we could, not, we could get confused. I think it's good we have one. It's good. So, and, uh, so there are 13 moons there. And uh, the... Jupiter makes the fastest rotation. It rotates uh, in nine hours, point eight, approximately nine hours. Nine point eight how at hours it has completed a, a rotation. So in nineteen hours it has completed two rotations. We have not completed one. We are going to complete one in 24 hours. Yeah? So then they have had a night, a day, another night, a day. They are now into another night and day when we are finishing our one night and our one day. Yeah? <laughs> Everybody's bodies are funny. So the, and the revolution, uh, because of the enormous distance, I said, it's about 778 million kilometers away from the sun. So it takes it 11.86 earth years. 11.86 earth years to complete a revolution. 
if there was a child who was born on the earth, that child could have celebrated the 11th birthday. He's just waiting to complete the, to, to celebrate the 12th uh, birthday when Jupiter is completing one revolution. So if we were born in uh, Jupiter, a child who is 12 years is only one year old in Jupiter. Hmm? But the child could have finished so many days and nights because uh, in four and a half hours, a day is over. And another four and a half hours, a night is over. Okay? And that is the life which is not there in Jupiter. Let us talk about Satan. Satan is not Satan the devil. Satan the, Satan the heavenly body. Satan is number six. Satan has got eight satellites. Second to Jupiter. It is the second largest heavenly body and it is the brightest. It has got three rings of a bright object that are surrounding the, 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 the planet. At the center, the brightest ring uh, is, uh, is formed there. Then we have two others. So it is the only, it's very unique. It has got bright rings which are uh, uh, revolving around it and it has got uh, eight moons which revolve around it. The Saturn also rotates and it revolves. It rotates in 10.2 earth hours and it revolves in 29.46 earth years to complete one rotation. So if you were 30 years, if you were in Jupiter, I mean in Saturn, you could only be one year and uh, some months old. Then Uranus, the seventh uh, planet, uh, is very unique. When these other heavenly bodies are revolving in an anticlockwise direction, it revolves in a clockwise direction. And it completes its revolution in the correct time on its own orbit. Even Venus, it does the same. So these are the two heavenly bodies that uh, move in a, in a different direction while the other ones are also making their orbits. Uranus is about 2,869 kilometers away from the sun. It's very far. It has got five moons. It revolves and rotates. Rotation takes it about 23 Earth hours. Neptune, which is the last uh, heavenly body, I mean planet, is about 4,496.7 million kilometers away from the sun. Very far. Very far. They cannot be seen by the naked eye. They are very far. They rotate. It rotates once in 22 earth hours and revolves in 164.8 Earth years. It has got two moons and uh, that one makes the end of our planets. We look at the other heavenly bodies. We have the asteroids. Asteroids are also called um, planetoids. They are very small planet-like heavenly bodies which are moving around the sun. They are very many, about 1,500 of them, and they exist uh, between Mars and Jupiter. They are believed to have been giant planets, and now they are just remains of uh, uh, former very large planets. They are um, rocky, and they do not have a round shape. They, their orbits, they cross the orbits of others. Now, then we talk about the comets. Comets are heavenly bodies which revolve around the sun. They don't rotate. They have a head and a tail. The head is made up of dust, uh, rock, and frozen gases. The tail is a uh, elongated 
away it points away from the sun and they are uh, they make a very long and elliptical uh, uh, movement around the sun and because of this very long and elliptical movement so they have um, they seem not to make the sun to be at the center they are very close to the sun at one point and very far away from the sun at one point they form long longer tails when they approach the sun when they are very near the sun because of its elliptical movement they cross the orbits of other heavenly bodies and that is it then we have meteors meteors are um, rocky uh, objects heavenly bodies or small heavenly bodies that uh, move from the outer space and they aim the uh, they enter the earth's surface at a very high speed because of the high speed and the friction in space they 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 appear red in color red hot in color now when they approach the earth's surface they enter into the earth's atmosphere uh, which is uh, arranged in layers and when they get into the second earth's atmosphere uh, they get burnt up because there is uh, excess oxygen molecules there and so we usually see them uh, in a flash of a second uh, passing through the space i mean through the sky and they get burnt up into dust then we talk about meteorites uh, the meteorites are meteors which fail to burn they are heavenly bodies which enter into the earth's atmosphere they have they move very fast and they are red hot in color but they fail to burn and they finally manage to land on the earth at service and they make very huge uh, depressions which we call craters if they contain water they form uh, crater lakes if they don't then they just form an empty crater now uh, meteorites are uh, foreign bodies which are very rich in iron so where they land that ground uh, contains a lot of iron we have the moon which is a satellite a natural satellite and uh, they are uh, small in size it is very small in size and it revolves around the earth it also rotates on its own axis and revolves around the earth it has got no much business with the sun but as it is rotating i mean revolving around the earth and the earth is also revolving around the the sun so it also revolves around the sun but uh, in di more indirectly rather than directly and uh, it is um, it moves around the earth in almost a circular uh, orbit it, it is not elliptical it is only it is round in uh, in shape and that is the end of our good topic today about the composition of the heavenly bodies uh, we have seen that there are very many heavenly bodies we have the planets which are eight in number and we have the asteroids we have the comets we have the meteors we have the meteorites and then we have the moon all those ones the are members of our solar system we also have the sun which is at the center and the most important and the, the largest in size among the members of the solar system thank you very much we're very grateful that you found time to watch our content. Kindly press the subscribe button down there and leave a like if the content was helpful to you. Join us in the next lessons. Thank you.